The Second World War saw many events that still haunt the world to this day. It was one of the most brutal events that has ever occurred in the history of mankind. It brought to light some of the most inhumanely horrific incidents ever, like the Nanjing Massacre, the Bataan March, and the worst of them all, the Holocaust. After five years of horrifying battle, two events bookended its conclusion. One was when Soviet tanks rolled up over Hitler's bunker. The second was when the US dropped the two atom bombs. The Allied forces had unearthed some of the most horrifically brutal crimes against humanity as they crept closer and closer into the Axis-controlled regions. After the war, several trials were held for prosecuting people involved in crimes against humanity, the two most prominent of them being the Tokyo Trials and the Nuremberg Trials. But many criminal officers of the Japanese Imperial Army and the German Nazis escaped conviction and lived a life of relative ease. In this video, we will look at the escape of Nazi criminals, who were helped significantly by the Church, the Allies, and neo-fascist regimes as they escaped into South American countries such as Argentina, Brazil, and Chile during the 1940s. After 1945, the scale of the horror of the Holocaust came to light. Faced with unprecedented cruelty, much of the world responded with unprecedented vigor. The new term, crimes against humanity, was coined in the subsequent Nuremberg trials, as Allied lawyers called senior Nazis to account. And yet, fewer than 300 Nazis faced judgment in the Nuremberg trials while up to 9,000 Nazis by some counts were spirited away from Europe after World War II, helped by sympathetic agents and friends. Some were taken by the US to build their missiles and other technology. Some were taken by the Soviets. But a large number of them found new lives in South America. By the late 1940s, much of South America, particularly Brazil, Chile and Argentina, was a haven for thousands of Nazis eluding justice. German prosecutors in recent years have estimated that Brazil accepted between 1,500 and 2,000 Nazis, Chile took in between 500 and 1,000, and Argentina welcomed up to 5,000 Nazis to their country. The reasons behind the Nazis fleeing to South America are multifaceted. The first and most obvious reason was fear of prosecution. The Allies were determined to hold the Nazis accountable for the atrocities they committed during the war. The Nuremberg trials prosecuted the top surviving Nazi officials, and many were sentenced to death or lengthy prison terms. However, Another reason for the Nazis' flight to South America was the political climate in the region. Many countries in South America were sympathetic to the fascist cause and saw the Nazis as fellow anti-communist fighters. Brazil, for example, had a president, Cachulio Vargas, who was a known fascist sympathizer and who had expressed admiration for Nazi Germany. The government of Argentina, led by Juan Perón, also had ties to the fascist movement, and it is believed that he personally helped many Nazis escape to his country. Many South American countries were also home to large communities of ethnic Germans during and after World War II. In many cases, these communities were sympathetic to and even welcomed Nazis, helping them to evade justice. In the mid-1980s, it was estimated that 3.6 million of Brazil's 130 million citizens, 1 million out of Argentina's 28 million people, and 200,000 out of 3.5 million citizens of Paraguay were ethnically German. Many of them maintain the language and traditions of their forefathers, the New York Times noted in 1985. Because of their strong cultural identity, the older German farming communities in southern Brazil and southern Paraguay have often been accused of harboring Nazis. In 1962, the Chilean town of Colonia Dignidad was found to be home to 300 families who'd fled Germany after World War II, finding a welcome, and no questions asked, among their compatriots in South America. In 1955, General Alfredo Stroessner, a grandson of immigrants from Bavaria, opened Paraguay to former Nazis. In the 1930s, Brazil had the biggest Nazi party in the world after Germany, with 40,000 members. Many of these Brazilian Nazis welcomed German Nazis after the war. In Argentina, future President Juan Perón spent part of the war, from 1939 to 1941, working in Argentina's embassy in Italy and openly admired the politics of Benito Mussolini and Adolf Hitler. When Perón became president of Argentina in 1946, he ordered the establishment of secret channels, called rat lines, to ferry thousands of Nazis from ports in Spain and Italy out of Europe and into Latin America. This network consisted of individuals and organizations that helped Nazis escape Europe and find new lives in South America. The rat line was made up of a variety of people, including Catholic priests, former members of the SS, and even some intelligence agencies. 
the RAC line was able to provide false papers and passports, safe houses, and transportation to South America. One of the most well-known individuals involved in the RAC line was a Croatian priest named Krunislav Draganovic. Draganovic was a member of the Eustace, a fascist organization in Croatia that collaborated with the Nazis during the war. After the war, Draganovic used his connections within the Catholic Church to help Nazis escape Europe. He provided false papers and passports, as well as safe houses and transportation. It is believed that Draganovic helped as many as 2,000 Nazis escape to South America. The most popular destination for Nazis fleeing to South America was Argentina. The country had a large German community and a sympathetic government, making it an ideal destination for many former Nazis. The most famous Nazi to escape to Argentina was Adolf Eichmann, one of the chief architects of the Holocaust. Eichmann fled to Argentina in 1950 and lived there under a false identity until he was captured by the Israeli Mossad in 1960 and brought to trial in Israel. The impact of the Nazis' flight to South America is still being felt today. The most obvious impact was the fact that many war criminals were able to escape justice. Many of the Nazis who fled to South America lived out their lives in peace and prosperity, despite their crimes. This was a bitter pill for the survivors of the Holocaust and their families, who felt that justice had not been served. Another impact of the Nazis' escape to South America was the way it affected the political climate in the region. The fascist sympathies of some South American governments were strengthened by the arrival of so many Nazis, and this led to a climate of political repression and human rights abuses in some countries. The escape of Nazis to South America also had an impact on the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union both saw South America as a strategic region, and were concerned about the influence of the Nazis. The discovery of Nazi war criminals in the region led to a series of covert operations, as both superpowers tried to gather intelligence and influence events. The escape of Nazis to South America made it more difficult to prosecute those responsible for the Holocaust and other war crimes. Many of the escapees were able to live out their lives in relative anonymity, without facing justice for their crimes. It wasn't until the 1960s and 70s that efforts to track down and prosecute Nazi war criminals in South America began to gain momentum. Today, conservative estimates state that there are a minimum of 6 million descendants of escaped Nazis in South America. The world has put everything that happened behind and is moving forward. Countries are more focused on progress and development instead of settling old scores. But it still remains as a grim reminder of the fact that the entire world failed to deliver justice to thousands of criminals and let them get away with everything they did. It reminds us that even countries that are supposed to be based on human values, are guilty of protecting hardcore criminals for their own benefits.